Hello nerds and nerdettes and welcome back to the channel where once again we have a new review on a newly reprinted omnibus which is none other than Batman Nightfall Volume 1. This is a long time whale of mine so I'm very excited for this reprint but before we get into the details of the book a quick reminder that if you are looking for this particular DC omnibus or any omnibus in general that I feature on this channel to use the channel sponsor organicpricebooks.com you can use the code stay nerdy for two dollars off your order or if you're ordering three or more books you can use the code stay nerdy ship it together to get five percent off that order also for my manga lovers i am a right stuff affiliate so if you'd like to help support the channel when ordering your manga from right stuff then you can go into the description down below and use my affiliate link both the organic price books code and the affiliate link are great ways to help support the channel. Every little bit counts, every little bit matters. So thank each and every one of you guys for contributing what you can. But let's get into the details of the Omnibus. So this is a DC Omnibus, so it does have a cover price of $150, which seems to be that standard price that they slap on pretty much all Omnibuses at this point. This particular omnibus does have a page count of 940 pages. This is a volume one of three, so to get this complete story or era, if you will, you are going to need volumes two and three, which have not been reprinted and are out of print at this time. But we do have volume one, so let's go ahead and jump to the overhead shots, talk a little bit about this story or era of Batman and what kind of takes place, and also take a look at the beautiful design of this book and here we are batman nightfall omnibus volume one this is the same cover from the uh, original printing here's the spine definitely not a huge fan of the spine it's kind of messy to be honest this whole dust jacket's a little messy in my opinion or busy rather and then on the back every man has a breaking point even the batman that very much alludes to the story, believe it or not, um, but you do have a little synopsis here as well. This is a volume one of three, so if you want the entire era, you will need volumes one through three of the omnibuses, but it is collected in fat trades, I think a compendium as well, so if you want to collect it in a different format, then you can go that route as well. But let's get under this dust jacket and take a look at the inner flaps and the binding. And here we are under the dust jacket, taking a quick look at the inner flaps. We do have on the left side pretty much most of the writers that make an appearance throughout this omnibus and then on the right side most of the artists that make an appearance throughout this omnibus but let's spread this out and take a look at the wraparound cover that is on the board the image on the board is the same image from the dust jacket just with no back credits i think it does uh, perform better on the board itself so i actually do like this wraparound even though i didn't like the dust jacket but that's all subjective, but let's take a quick look at the binding. Taking a quick look at the binding, we do not have the best eye here. Um, definitely no eye, but it does lay down fairly flat, so I guess uh, it's not horrible, but I would like a better eye just so there's not any gutter loss, but I'll take it. This is a whale of mine, so I'm gonna take what I can get. I did stretch this about two times as well. All right, let's get right into this omnibus. Before we get into it though, I do wanna show like the end pages. So on this side, you do have Batman. And then on the back side of the omnibus, you do have Batsrail or Asbat, whatever your name you have for him is. And I do think that is such an awesome touch. It's probably my favorite aspect of this omnibus and it's definitely worth showing off. But let's go ahead and get into the omnibus. So obviously you have these end sheets of that beautiful mural of Batman. Batman Nightfall Volume 1. That may be a scene that takes place here. Um, and then we do have the creators page. Chuck Dixon, Doug M Mensch, and Alan Grant on writing. Um, as far as pencilers, you have a more chock full group there. You have Graham Nolan, Jim Aparo, Norm Brayfogle, uh, Mike Manley, just to name a few. The art throughout is fairly well done. I think there's, I want to say two issues that I didn't necessarily enjoy the art, but it's in the later half of the omnibus. So here's a introduction here. It is a fairly lengthy um, introduction, and that's all by Doug Mensch. And then you do get into the first issue of the omnibus, which in a lot of ways is a prequel to Nightfall. 
which is Vengeance of Bane. This is pretty much a story where you are going to not only get introduced to Bane, but you're also going to get his origins. You're going to get why he is the man that he is, why he has the mission that he has throughout this omnibus, why he's so lethal against Batman, um, really all aspects of the character. And I, I'm very happy that that was in here. I think it performs better as a story with that. Um, but I think learning who Bane is and just how deadly he is and why he's so deadly is probably the the highlight of the Bane character or getting accustomed with the Bane character as you go deeper into the story. And there we have the uh, appearance of Bane as we know him. So after that, you do pretty much jump into a multitude of storylines. So one thing that I would reference this omnibus, this story as is much more of an era this story does span throughout multiple years. Um, you're going to have a lot of things taking place, not just the Bane and Batman portion, but kind of the lead up. Because throughout a, I'd probably say the first half of this omnibus, Bane is not a front and center villain. He is much more of a character that is working behind the scenes. And it's almost kind of eerie in a lot of ways because you get to see him just kind of sitting in the background at times or peeking on Batman and Batman in a lot of the scenes knows that he's being watched or knows that he's kind of being moved against but he doesn't exactly know who this character is because this is the first time him and the character of Bane actually meet so he has no clue who this character is that is moving against him and causing such a ruckus in Gotham but then you have the secondary lead up of Nightfall which is when Bane's plan goes into motion, and that is releasing all of the criminals from Arkham Asylum and Blackgate, pretty much all of Batman's rogues gallery being released on the city of Gotham, and Batman having to jump in and be pushed to his limits trying to recapture all of these villains. And in a lot of ways, Bane kind of makes it even more difficult for him. Um, one story that gets referenced during the Bane fight is the Riddler fight. Um, Riddler is obviously a character that Bane or Batman is very used to dealing with in an intelligent way, never really a physical way. But because of Bane, he actually finds himself in a physical predicament with the character of Riddler that massively catches him off guard. Not to mention, obviously, Joker doing his typical schemes and plans. By the end of the release of all of the rogues gallery characters and villains, you really get to see a defeated, beat down, injured, damaged Batman. And they really show that through the art. You're going to notice, here's a Firefly here, um, but you're going to notice the character of Batman showing a lot of wear and tear and I think they capture that in a great way because they obviously capture it in the more typical comic book way which is you do see the battle damage on the bat suit but you also get to see Batman show a lot of fatigue in his eyes you get to see a lot of sweat drip from his chin from his brow you get to see him develop a five o'clock shadow at no point he has any time to really recover and and fight and he he just has to keep going and has cannot rest cannot take a break until the eventual break that he is forced to take by the character of Bane um and that's really the first time that you see Bane and Batman come face to face you get to literally see Batman get pushed to his limits and then the eventual face-to-face -face scene of Batman coming up from the Batcave and coming face-to-face -face with Bane in Wayne Manor and getting pushed to his limits once again. Um, and then obviously that leads to the breaking of the Bat. If you don't know exactly what that is or what that reference is, we won't go too deeply into it, but you may see some things during the art. 
So just be aware of that. Um, so during this particular story, you are going to have a mantle swap of the character of Batman. And a lot of you may be thinking, oh, well, that's going to be Dick Grayson, Tim Drake, somebody that is a familiar of Batman. It is actually a character that is introduced a, not, not too early um, before this entire event kind of starts. And that is the character of Jean-Paul Valley, who is Azrael. He eventually gets brought under Bruce's wing, gets trained by not only Bruce, but also Tim, and then eventually gets handed the mantle of Batman and things go a little awry from there. Um, it, they do play on the typical superhero replacement trope or death of a superhero, even though Bruce Wayne doesn't die. Death of a superhero trope. And honestly, it's uh, very interesting the way they spin that on its head because rather than getting a, a successor that is worthy of the mantle, you get quite the opposite. You get a character that kind of delves deep into madness and and brutality and anger and in a lot of ways creates the or makes the mantle of batman his own in a very brutal and sadistic way and that's an aspect i do enjoy you're actually seeing it on the screen now the scene where jean paul valley or bat trail or as bat um kind of making his own upgrades to the bat suit, which start as these sharp gauntlets. And then eventually he creates even more upgrades until he is eventually quite literally a living weapon. And he then unleashes himself, him unleashes himself on the city of Gotham against Tim Drake's wishes, Bruce Wayne's wishes, who is kind of not involved at this point and ends up going face to face with Bane to show Bane who is the better Batman. And man, is this good stuff. Um, there is a very iconic image here where you get the first appearance of the suit. There we are. It's super 90s, but it is perfect. And it is such a great story. It only gets deeper from here. This is only the beginning, believe it or not. Um, so definitely read on get the other omnibuses or read on in trade paperback but we are going to stop there just so we don't touch too much on the end of the omnibus so obviously in the back you are going to have extras um, which i don't show off too often but one extra i do want to show off is the azrael bat suit there's a pretty much breakdown of what it is on this page here you have just the inks here and then the breakdown of each technology aspect each upgrade to the suit and i think that is so cool how much thought they put into the suit such a great extra um and i really just wanted to shine some light on that but that does wrap up the overhead shots so let's head back to the table for some closing thoughts and welcome back nerds and nerdettes so i've probably said in previous videos if not saying it probably in this one this is my favorite era of batman i can kind of go back and forth between no man's land and Nightfall, but I typically do kind of champion Nightfall as my favorite era of Batman, just because of the dark and brutalness of the story that takes place. Obviously, you have the introduction of Bane, which, contrary to popular belief by a lot of maybe not too um, experienced comic book readers, Bane is not an idiot with big muscles. Bane is arguably one of the most dangerous Batman villains in his rogues gallery because not only is he an extremely skilled martial artist and obviously has the use of Venom, so he does have extreme strength, but he is extremely, extremely cunning, extremely intelligent, and almost very reminiscent of Batman where he is planning multiple steps ahead before he even executes his plan and i do think you really get to see the character of bane and just how dangerous of a character he is in general i think there's so much build up to the eventual fight or appearance of the character of bane that i absolutely love that aspect um, you really get to see him in little snidbits and little minor fights that don't really take place on screen if you will but you get to see just how brutal and powerful he really is and just how many 
wheels he has turning when it comes to his plan that he's trying to execute. And I absolutely love that because once his eventual appearance face-to-face -face with Batman takes place, it's chill-inducing, it gets the hairs on the back of your neck to stand up, it gets you excited, and what follows is absolutely incredible. It's beyond dynamic, it's uh, heart-wrenching, it's emotional, it's brutal. It's absolutely great. I cannot emphasize enough that this is not only a very important story and era for the character of Batman's history, but just a good comic book story in general. Because um, you do have a somewhat typical trope where a superhero gets a mantle swap with another character, um, which I'm not going to get into why that takes place, just in case there are anybody watching or there is anybody watching that has hasn't read this particular story and doesn't want anything spoiled. But you do have a mantle swap and it almost goes awry and you don't get to see the um, kind of expected yet another hero filling a hero spot. You get to see a little bit of a twisted version of that and I actually really think it's ahead of its time and very interesting that they went that route, especially with such a beloved character like Batman where we would definitely expect to see Dick or Tim or somebody that we would kind of connect with Batman taking that mantle and being just as good, if not minorly good, of a Batman as Bruce Wayne. But we see something completely different take place, and I love it. Um, Azrael is obviously, or John Paul Valley, who is Azrael, um, he gets introduced in this as well, or not fully introduced, but more fleshed out throughout this. Um, his character does feel fairly rushed and kind of shoehorned at times, but it kind of makes sense because they knew they are going to go this route with the story, so I guess you have to inject somebody that too many people haven't fell in love with, like Dick, or un like they did with Dick Grayson, and they can have somebody that they can eventually end up disliking because of reasons. Um, the as uh, Batsrael... Uh, costume, absolutely love it. I don't think I need to uh, talk about why that is so awesome, but I do enjoy the somewhat slow progression that you have Jean Paul going through as he becomes Batsrael, or as as Bat, or whatever the names we've given him through the years. Um, and it is really interesting to see that slow progression into that character and the brutality of that character. And I very much enjoy that as well, especially when it comes between between the friction that is created between Tim Drake, who is the Robin of this era, and Batriel. So, very interesting when you see that dynamic between Jean-Paul Valley and Tim Drake, and who are supposed to be the new dynamic duo, but don't exactly kind of mesh because of reasons that we won't get into. But, absolutely great. I highly recommend this era as well as the No Man's Land era. Those are my two favorite eras of Batman. A lot of people say this is a story, but it is much more of an era of Batman just because there's so much content during this time period. So just expect a lot more to come after this volume because a lot more does take place between volume one and obviously volume three. So really good stuff though. This is one of my favorite Batman eras and stories, so of course the rating that I am going to give it is going to be a 9.1 out of 10. I very much enjoy this. I think this is great. It's emotional. It's heart-wrenching. You have classic yet modern, uh, somewhere in between art style taking place where it feels very classic and aged well, but also modern when it comes to a lot of the fight scenes and paneling. So. Definitely recommend this. Do yourself a favor and read it, especially if you're a Bat fan, because it's one of those essential reads that you really have to read when getting into DC and when getting into Batman. But that does wrap up today's review. Thank you all so much for watching. This was a very exciting release for me. Um, this is my favorite era or my second favorite era of Batman, so this was a must-get for me personally, even though I'm not the biggest Batman fan in general. 
But um, like I have mentioned, I am going to be having some personal things taking place during the month of October. So I am going to have a video posted for you guys on Wednesday, but that will be the final video of the week. Um, I am going to try and get a video out on Monday, but I'll let you guys know if I am able to get that out or not. So just stay tuned, bear with me, and again, I apologize. But if you guys didn't watch this and you're not a part of the Illuminati, hit that subscribe button to join the community today. It is an amazing and awesome place, and I am so proud to be a part of it. Also, if you could do me a favor, because it really helps with the algorithm, and hit that thumbs up icon. It really means a lot to us on the channel. And if you did enjoy today's video also, and you want to be notified when it, other content gets posted, hit that bell icon. That way you can get notifications. But again, thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed yourself. And of course, stay nerdy.